Before Kafka, sharing data between systems was messy. Take a food delivery app. Orders come in, payments go out, drivers need live updates. Now if every service had to talk directly to every other one, it quickly became chaos. And that's why message queues like RabbitMQ and ActiveMQ became popular. They acted as a middleman, taking messages from one system and safely delivering them to another. It worked well for a while, but as data exploded, these queues started to crack. They weren't built for the fire hoses of events coming from millions of users every second. They could pass messages, but not handle the scale, speed, and replay needs of modern systems. That's when Apache Kafka entered the picture. Not as just another queue, but as a distributed commit log that could handle massive streams of data with durability and replayability built in. And today, Ivan has taken that idea even further, making Kafka truly cloud native and diskless. They are also the sponsor of this video, but as always, the explanation and opinions here are completely my own. We'll start from the basics, how Kafka works, why it became the backbone of modern systems, and then explore how Ivan's diskless Kafka rethinks storage for speed, scale, and simplicity. Let's get started. Imagine a stock trading platform that streams market events like buy orders, sell orders, and price updates to downstream systems. Here, maintaining the exact order of transactions is critical. If events are processed out of sequence, the system could show wrong balances, fail to reverse trades properly, and even record inconsistent histories. And that's why Kafka and similar systems use a commit log instead of a traditional queue. A commit log is simply an ordered record of all events stored sequentially. Each new trade event buy or sell gets appended to the end of the log. The offset is like the line number in this notebook. It never changes. The key can represent a unique identifier such as a stock symbol or transaction ID. The value holds the actual trade data in JSON format. Kafka stores this log sequentially on disk. So reading or replaying events is as simple as saying, give me everything from offset two onward. And that's how consumers like accounting or analytic systems can reprocess trades exactly as they happen, in perfect order. Now Kafka takes this idea further with a distributed commit log. Basically a commit log that spreads across multiple machines or brokers. Here is how it breaks down. A topic is just a name stream of events. You might have a topic called trade events or stock prices. Each topic is divided into partitions, which are similar chunks of the overall log. This allows Kafka to process multiple streams of events in parallel boosting performance. The machines that store and manage these partitions are called brokers, and each broker handles a subset of partitions, so the workload is distributed across the cluster. When a new event arrives, Kafka appends it to the end of the right partition log and stores it on disk. And that guarantees durability. Even if a server restarts, the data remains intact. Kafka also keeps replicated copies of each partition on other brokers. So if one broker fails, another already has an identical copy ready to take over. This replication ensures the cluster stays consistent and no event is ever lost. In short, topics organize events by category. Partitions divide the load and preserve order within each stream. And brokers are the servers that hold and serve this data. Together, they form Kafka's distributed commit log. Scalable, fault tolerant, and perfect for systems like stock trading where even a single missing event could cost millions. But how and why Kafka is so fast? Kafka's speed isn't magic, it's engineering. The biggest reason is how it writes data to disk. Now, traditional databases or message queues often perform random reads and writes, jumping around on disk to insert or update records. But Kafka doesn't do that. It uses an append-only model, meaning each new event is written sequentially, one after another, to the end of the log. On modern SSDs and even spinning disk, sequential writes are dramatically faster than random ones. Because instead of constantly seeking different disk locations, Kafka just streams data in order, which the hardware and file system can handle incredibly efficiently. Then comes the OS page cache, a clever optimization. So when Kafka writes to disk, the operating system automatically keeps the most recent data in memory. So when consumers read those same messages, Kafka can serve them directly from RAM without touching the disk again. And that's why most reads feel almost instantaneous. 
Kafka also batches data internally, combining multiple small records into a single larger write. That reduces disk I.O., minimizes system calls, and makes every write operation count. In short, sequential write means faster disk performance, page cache means near memory speed reads, and batching results to fewer, more efficient writes. That's the trial that makes Kafka handles millions of messages per second, while still keeping data safe on disk. And this design of Kafka solved a huge problem in modern software, how to move massive streams of data reliably between services. And once companies realized it could handle millions of messages per second while keeping them ordered, durable, and replayable, Kafka became the backbone of real-time data systems. It powers everything from microservice communication and log collection to analytics pipeline and event sourcing. Let's take a few examples. Netflix uses Kafka to deliver real-time user activity streams from what you watch to what you hover on to dozens of downstream systems. Uber uses it to handle live GPS updates and trip state changes for millions of rights. Banks and trading firms rely on it to ensure financial transactions are recorded in exact order with zero data loss. The beauty of Kafka is that it separates data production from data consumption. Producers don't need to know who is reading their data and consumers can process at their own pace, even replaying past events if needed. This decoupling made architectures more resilient and flexible. So what's the catch? Now as Kafka's adoption exploded, one part of architecture started to show limits. Storage. Remember, Kafka writes every message to disk for durability. And that's a good thing. It's what makes it reliable. But at scale, those disks becomes a bottleneck. Every message that enters Kafka has to be written to the leader broker's local disk, be replicated to follower's broker's disk, and stay stored there until the retention policy deletes it. For small systems, that's fine. But for large-scale systems, say terabytes or even petabytes of data per day, this approach becomes expensive and complex to manage. And here is why. Because with a replication factor of 3, each piece of data is stored 3 times across brokers. That triples your storage cost instantly. Each broker's disk is handling both new writes and old reads. When many consumers read historical data, disk I.O. skyrockets. And adding new brokers means redistributing partitions, which involves copying tons of data, a time-consuming and risky operation. And finally, teams must constantly monitor disk space, move partitions, and plan retention carefully to avoid brokers running out of space. In other words, Kafka's strength, durability through local disk, also became its biggest pain point as data volumes exploded. And that's when the community started exploring new ideas like TS storage and eventually diskless Kafka. So to deal with the growing data volumes, the Kafka community introduced TS storage, a way to offload older data from expensive broker desk to cheaper cloud storage like S3. In this setup, Kafka keeps only recent hot data locally and moves older, less frequently accessed segments to object storage automatically. That means your brokers handle real-time writes and reads from the last few hours or days, while long-term data sits safely and cheaply in the cloud. It was a smart step, reducing cost and extending retention, but the architecture still dependent on local disk for all new writes. So the brokers remain stateful, replication overhead continued, and scaling was still manual and heavy. And so the next evolution was obvious. What if Kafka could skip local disk entirely and write straight to cloud storage from the start? That's the idea behind diskless Kafka. And that's exactly what Ivan has made production ready. Ivan's diskless Kafka, also called Inkless, takes the concept of tiered storage to its logical conclusion. Ivan didn't just remove disk. They redesigned how Kafka stores data to take full advantage of the cloud. So instead of treating cloud storage as a backup tier, it makes it the primary storage layer. Here is how it works. Producers still send data the same way. Kafka brokers receive events in batches, just like before. But instead of writing to local disk, brokers write straight to cloud storage, like Amazon S3. That cloud bucket becomes the real, durable source of truth. Each partition now lives in the cloud, not on the broker's hard drive. This means storage and compute can scale separately. Replica-led reads make data access faster. The same broker serving a partition can fetch data directly from cache or the object store with fewer network hops. A unified data format keeps everything compatible with existing tools like Iceberg and Analytics pipelines. Caching for hot data ensures recent messages are served instantly 
while older ones are fetched from the object store when needed. And with stateless brokers, scaling becomes simple. Spin up or replace a broker anytime without moving data around. Ivan's Discless Kafka essentially turns Kafka into a serverless-like streaming system. Brokers act as compute nodes, object storage provides durable persistence, and developers keep the same Kafka API and ecosystem. From the developer's point of view, nothing changes. You still create topics, produce events, and consume them exactly like before. But behind the scenes, Kafka becomes stateless, elastic, and cloud-native. Now, no system is perfect, and this list introduces a few practical considerations. Because fetching from cloud storage can add a few milliseconds compared to local disk. And your data durability now relies on your cloud provider's storage availability. However, services like S3 are highly reliable. And so, finding the right balance is the key. For most modern-day workloads, those trade-offs are well worth the simplicity, elasticity, and cost benefits. Kafka revolutionized how data moves inside companies. It turned stream of events into shared, reliable backbone for everything from payments to analytics. So whether you are building analytics pipeline, event-driven microservices, or financial systems, this less Kafka lets you do it all without worrying what's stored where. And that's the future of event streaming. Simple, elastic, and cloud-native.